Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We've started a new series uh, looking through the epistle, the letter, uh, to the church at Ephesus, the book of Ephesians. And Paul was writing this to them. And we've looked at the first two verses, but then I thought, well, let's go back in the Acts to see how the gospel came to them and how it developed. And so we saw uh, in the last episode that Paul had come to Ephesus with Priscilla and Aquila. And he shared in the synagogue for a short period of time, but then he left. And he left Aquila and Priscilla there. Well, they're there. Paul's gone. Then this guy named Apollos shows up. And Apollos is very strong in the scripture. He was a Jew from Alexandria. And he knew of the coming of Messiah, but didn't know of Jesus. He knew of John's baptism. In other words, he knew what John was saying, that it was you need to repent because Messiah is coming very soon. Well, Aquila and Priscilla took him aside and explained to him uh, more correctly. In other words, they explained Jesus to him. He believed, and he became very powerful in the Scripture. He left from there and went to Achaia, went to Corinth. And so that's where we pick up the accounts in Acts chapter 19 now, verse 1. So it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, so you see how the, the flow of the story goes, that Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus and found some disciples. So Paul returns. They had been gone. So Paul missed the whole time that Apollos was there. So Paul comes back and he comes to Ephesus and he finds some disciples. And a disciple simply means what? Remember? Learner. A disciple is someone who's learning. So verse 2, Paul said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, no, we haven't even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Something had been revealed to Paul, likely by the Holy Spirit, and also by the various things that they might have been saying, because he, he found some disciples. So he thought, well, let me just inquire of them. And the way that he inquired of them was, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they were very forthright and very honest. They said, no, we haven't even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Verse 3, and he said to them, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. And it's the same thing that would, uh, had happened with Apollos. These were disciples. These were learners. They knew that Messiah was coming. They were so excited about it. But Paul thought and said, wait, something's not quite right here. So he asked them about the Holy Spirit. They said, we don't even know there is one. And he says, well, when you were baptized, what were you baptized in? And they said, oh, we were baptized into John's baptism. In other words, that baptism of repentance, of seeking forgiveness for God in, in anticipation of Messiah's coming. Verse 4. So Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance. There you go. That's the reason I'm always saying it that way, <laughs> because it's right out of the Scripture. John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him. That is in Jesus. So this is the same thing that uh, uh, Paul, uh, Apollos was told uh, by Priscilla and Aquila. Okay, the same thing. So now Paul is sharing it with this group of disciples and says, it's Jesus who you're anticipating and he's come. Well, how do they react? Verse 5 tells us. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, it's not so much the act of baptism, though it is the act of baptism. So hang with me here. When they heard this, they were baptized. What that means is this. When they heard this, they believed it. Okay, They believed. They would not have heard it and not believe that Jesus was Messiah and gone ahead and been baptized in the name of the Lord. No, that's what's revealed here. So, so often these verses like this, we handle them so flippantly and we don't take time to just let the Spirit reveal to us what's happening here. They heard the truth from Paul that, you know what, you were baptized in, and believing in the one that's come? He has come and his name is Jesus. Now, Paul would have told what had happened. He would have told about the death, burial, and resurrection. We don't have the account right here of that, okay? But that is the the foundation of the gospel. So when they heard this, 
They said, we believe this. They are baptized. And it's not so much a rebaptism. They never were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that, in the name of the Lord, isn't just some perfunctory little uh, thing that is spoken over somebody. What's being said here is that we are being baptized in the name. We believe that Jesus is Messiah. We believe everything that is revealed within the scripture of God and Messiah and all that is entailed with the name thereof. There's power in the name of the Lord. So when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. There were in all about 12 men. And so this is one of these little intriguing passages that you see all through the book of Acts and through the scripture about the Holy Spirit. There's times when people believe and the Holy Spirit came upon them. There's times like with Peter when he was preaching to Cornelius and his house full of people that were all Gentiles that Peter didn't even finish the message. (laughs) Okay? He was in the midst of preaching Jesus and the Holy Spirit fell upon the people. Well, why would the Holy Spirit have fallen upon the people unannounced and unpronounced and uh, unasked for, shall we say? Well, it didn't. What happened was they're listening to Peter, and in their heart, in their spirit, they are believing. They are believing. And when they believe, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and totally messes up Peter's great sermon. They messes up this time because this was unplanned by man. So you see all sorts of things. You see where, um, in this account right here, that Paul's asking them about this, okay? And they lay hands on them. You see with the Samaritans that the Holy Spirit didn't come upon them until some of the disciples from Jerusalem came and laid hands upon them. You see differences in all sorts of accounts and different ways that God does things. And he has a purpose. For instance, with the uh, Samaritans, the likely purpose, he doesn't tell us this point blank. But the likely purpose was that the, the, the Samaritans were often, often viewed as half-breeds in the eyes of the Jews, part Jews and part Gentile, part pagan. And they had their own uh, system of Judaism. They had their own thing. They had their own temple in Samaria and all this kind of stuff. And more than likely, what was being revealed there was that, no, what's coming out of Jerusalem, Jesus that came out of here is the true Messiah and true God. And that reserving of the Holy Spirit coming upon them with the laying on of hands of Peter and some other folks uh, was revealing to them that this is the true faith. Okay, this is the true faith. And anyway, give close attention to how the Holy Spirit comes. Now, notice this. When he laid hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon upon them, and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. You see this happening all the time you see people speaking in languages that they do not know they're languages that other people know it's what you see in the second chapter of acts but they're languages that they do not know and they're prophesying prophesying means this speaking forth the truth of the most high god if you sit there and look at somebody and say god loves you you have just prophesied over them you're prophesying the truth over them Too often we think prophesying is strictly limited to being able to foretell something that's going to take place in the future. There is an element of that. There's times when God clues us in to things that will happen down the road, and we're to speak forth the truth of that. But the primary understanding of it is that you're proclaiming the truth. So these folks were speaking in languages they did not know, and they're prophesying. Now, last word here. Many in the body of Christ today think that both of these prophesying and speaking in tongues were things just for a transitional time in the first generation of the church and are no longer valid today. Nothing could be further from the truth. That is not true. And we as the body of Christ are weaker because we reject these things. Uh, go read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 and 14, and then we'll see some things in Ephesus that'll get, uh, uh, in Ephesians that'll give us more insight into that. Well, my time's up. Again, I'm Dale. I'll see y'all again next time. Goodbye.